Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us in our Save a Life initiative and taking some time to learn the skills necessary to save someone's life. I'm Lauren Diffendarfer, the medical educator here at the DIS Foundation. To begin this webinar, I'd like to introduce you to Maxwell. Maxwell was an infant delivered by an emergency C-section one week after the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. At the time of Maxwell's birth, our executive director, Dr. Disk, was volunteering down in Haiti. Moments after Maxwell was born, a nurse took a picture of him, which is the top picture. As you can see, Maxwell is blue, as he was not breathing and his body lacked oxygen. The nurse was untrained in recognizing that he was in need of CPR. Upon seeing the photo, a BLS-trained healthcare provider recognized Maxwell's need and performed immediate life support that saved Maxwell's life. As you can see in the bottom picture, he looks like a healthy baby boy. And I wanted to share this story with you today to show you why we at the DIS Foundation do what we do. We want people to be able to recognize when someone is in need of CPR and know the skills that will enable them to do so. The challenge that we face is that 70% of Americans feel helpless to act during a cardiac emergency. This is often because they do not know how to administer CPR or that there has been a significant lapse in time since they last learned CPR. Thus, only 32% of cardiac arrest victims get CPR from a bystander. Even sadder is that less than 8% of people who survive from cardiac arrest outside the hospital survive. We hope that by teaching more people how to perform CPR, that these statistics will change for the better. It is important to learn CPR because over 400,000 people experience sudden cardiac arrest in an out-of-hospital setting each year. That is in a setting where it is unlikely that a trained health professional will be around. 88% of cardiac arrests occur actually in the home. There's an increased risk of death from heart attack in the initial two hours after onset of symptoms. However, studies have shown that immediate CPR can double or triple a victim's chance of survival, which I think is pretty amazing. Many people are afraid of performing CPR for a variety of reasons. Some fear that they may contract a disease from performing mouth-to-mouth -mouth when giving rescue breath. Although the chances of contracting a disease this way aren't very high, there are barrier devices available, such as pocket mask and bag mask devices. If the victim is an adult or teen, you may also consider compression-only CPR. Another common fear is the fear that they'll be held liable if the victim does not end up making it. However, there's the Good Samaritan Act, and since it has been passed, there has been no recorded cases against someone who is trying to save someone else's life through CPR. Unsure of skills and fear of hurting or killing the patient kind of go hand in hand, but I want you to realize that if a person is in cardiac arrest, they're dying, and you can only help them. Maybe you'll break one of their ribs from compressing a little too deep, but at least they're alive. Finally, in the case of an unsafe scene, this is the only fear that is acceptable to not perform CPR. And in fact, you should not perform CPR because you don't want to become a victim yourself. When performing CPR on adults, the AHA and the ECC have come up with the adult chain of survival, which sums up the steps necessary to save someone's life. First, you need to recognize cardiac arrest and activate the emergency response system, most likely by calling 911. Then perform CPR early on with an emphasis on chest compressions. When an AED is available, it should be used on the victim. Finally, when further help arrives, they will perform effective advanced cardio support and then give the victim integrated post-cardiac arrest care. So you may be thinking, what exactly is CPR? Well, CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Cardio refers to the heart, pulmonary refers to the lungs, and resuscitation means to recover. CPR combines rescue breathing and chest compressions to support heart and lung function when it appears to be inadequate. By doing so, you provide oxygen to the brain and other organs until further help arrives, such as an EMS. When performing CPR, it is important to begin immediately after recognizing that the victim is suffering from cardiac arrest. This will increase the victim's likelihood of survival, and after the onset of cardiac arrest, brain damage can start within 4-6 to six minutes and is almost certain after 10 minutes if there has been no effective CPR performed on the victim. 
When performing CPR, you can think of the acronym CAB. CAB lists the order in which you should perform the three main steps in CPR. When performing CPR, you should begin with compressions. After chest compressions, you'll then open the airway and deliver rescue breaths. Here is an overview of everything one should do when performing CPR. To begin, you want to ensure that the scene is safe. As I said earlier, you do not want to become a victim yourself. If the scene is safe, you should approach the victim and assess them for responsiveness. Tap them enough that if they were sleeping, you'd be able to wake them up. If you deem them unresponsive, call 911 and get an AED, whether this means you're doing it yourself or asking someone else to go get it for you. Next, assess the victim's breathing. If they're not breathing or only gasping, they need CPR. So begin CPR starting with 30 chest compressions. Then deliver two rescue breaths. Continue CPR at a ratio of 30 chest compressions to two breaths. When an AED is brought to the scene, use it immediately, minimizing interruptions in CPR. And continue performing CPR and using the AED until help arrives. When performing chest compressions during CPR, it is important to know the following information. Your hand should be placed on the breastbone of the victim in the center of their chest. For infants, you only need two fingers to perform chest compressions. You should compress at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute, which is to the beat of the song Staying Alive, and at a depth of one-third the chest. For adults, this is at least two inches, for children about two inches, and for infants about one and a half inches. In between each chest compression, you should allow for complete chest recoil to let the heart fill back up with blood completely. You should also have the victim lying flat on their back on a firm, flat surface to allow for m the most effective chest compressions. Finally, you should minimize interruptions between chest compressions. When giving rescue breaths, there are two methods for opening the airway. The head tilt chin lift and the jaw thrust. The jaw thrust method should be used if you suspect the victim suffered from trauma. Create a tight seal with your mouth or mask before giving a breath. Deliver two breaths, each lasting for one second, and watch for chest drives to ensure that the breath was effective. Otherwise, try re repositioning the airway. Try to avoid overventilation and limit this interruption in chest compression to 30 seconds maximum. Early, er, I had mentioned the use of an AED. Again, some of you may be thinking, what is an AED? An AED is an automated external defibrillator. It is a computerized defibrillator that analyzes the heart rhythm, recognizes whether rhythm is shockable or not, and then advises the operator on what to do next. They're very easy to use. To begin, you should turn on the AED. Place the AED pads on the chest according to the diagrams and then plug in the connector. Listen to the prompts of the AED. If a shock is advised, the AED will charge and prompt you to deliver a shock. Otherwise, it will prompt you to resume CPR. After a shock is delivered, if it's advised, you should go back to performing CPR until the AED prompts you to stop so that it can reassess the rhythm again. The online portion at NHCPS will go into more detail on special situations with um, the AED. I also want to cover on how to relieve choking. For choking in adults and children, you should perform abdominal thrust. To do so, stand behind the victim and wrap your arms under their ribcage. Making a fist with one hand located midway between the bottom of the breastbone and the navel. Cuff that fist with your other hand and pull inward and upward at an angle. Doing so until the object the victim is choking on becomes dislodged or the victim becomes unconscious. If the victim becomes unconscious, you should help lower them to the ground and begin CPR immediately. For infants, you should perform five chest thrusts and five back slaps until the object is dislodged. If the victim becomes unconscious, begin CPR immediately. And when going to give rescue breaths while performing CPR, you can look into their throat and see if you can see the airway obstruction. And if you can, you can try to finger it out. But if you cannot see the airway obstruction, you should not try to finger it out as you may push it further um, into the throat or harm them in another way. Again, I'd like to mention that hands-only CPR can be performed for teens and adults who suddenly collapse in an out-of-hospital setting if you feel uncomfortable doing mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. So let's go through this review real quick before I show you the skills video. 
So for chest compressions, you should perform 30 chest compressions at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions a minute. And the depth should be at least one third the depth of the chest. For adults, this is at least two inches. For children, it's about two inches. And for infants, it's about one and a half inches. When performing CPR, you should make sure that the victim's lying on a firm, flat surface. You should allow for complete chest recoil in between each compression, and you should minimize interruptions between chest compressions. When delivering rescue breaths, you can open the airway using one of two methods, either the head tilt chin lift maneuver or the jaw thrust. Create a tight seal um, when giving breaths, whether it be with your mouth or with a mask, and deliver the breath over one second. Look for chest rise for each breath and spend no longer than 10 seconds. And again, you can use barrier devices such as pocket masks or bag mask devices um, to deliver the breaths. When using an AED, it's very easy to use. You just power the AED on, attach the pads, plug in the connector, and follow the AED's prompts. For choking for adults and children, you do the Heimlich maneuver, which consists of abdominal thrust. And then for infants, you do five chest thrusts and five back slaps. And if at any time the victim becomes unresponsive, you should start CPR. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the skills video. Here is adult CPR. Okay, and now here is infant CPR. Now here is adult AED. And then here is infant AED.
And then here is adult choking. And then finally, here is infant choking. So if you have any questions regarding anything you've learned today, you can shoot me an email at lauren.diffendarfer at disfoundation.org. However, the course online will go over everything in more detail, so don't forget that you can certify online at NHCPS for free. Just use the coupon code that I gave you during checkout. Um, so that's all I have. Thanks, guys, so much for helping us to empower to save lives.